convinced if the reasons are not logical. Now, don't get me wrong, you might have logical reasons to support your belief. That still doesn't mean I have to believe it. But it doesn't, then I, it stops me saying your belief is false or your belief is wrong. Yeah? Sure. So, what do you believe? I believe I'm here now. Um, I don't. I don't. Not with regards to God and all this business. Yeah, I don't have. I don't have any uh, religious belief. Or, uh, I, I, to be honest, I probably say I'm agnostic. Uh, so you, so you're in a kind of don't know situation. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we we could. I don't think it's for us to comment on it. Really? Why I mean, not? You said that um, your belief from God follows from like your logic. Your belief, from God, your belief of God follows from logic, right? Yeah. Because you believe that the universe was caused um, and therefore needs an uncaused cause. I mean. I just think we can't know because we don't have any. Evidence. No, 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 no. But you're saying that. But well, I know, I know. But you're saying about um, the uncaused causer, and um, because that's why I asked about the, the problem of the infinite. Did you understand the problem of the infinite regression? Yeah, I mean, you can say, okay, well, then who caused who caused God then? If it, no, 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 the, the, no. But you know what the problem of infinite regression is? How it cannot be infinite because. I'm going to use this example. I've used this example many times. I'll try it out. Right. Imagine you're a sniper. So yeah? Yeah? And you've got someone in your sights. Sure. But before you can take the shot, you need to take permission. Okay. Yeah? And before that person can give you permission, they need to take permission. And before that person can give permission, they need to take permission. If permission is never given, the shot never gets fired. Sure. Right. This is infinite regression. So there has to be a point where someone says, take the shot, and then it'll come back up the chain. Sure. All right. So if you have a, a, a universe, a cause of the universe, that needs a cause, then that cause can't exist until that cause exists. But that cause can't exist until that cause exists. And that cause can't exist until that cause exists. And that cause can't exist until... Now, if that goes back infinite, you never have a start point. Can you define cause here? Yeah. When I say cause, I mean the... the what. Well, how would you define cause? I don't know, so I was asking you. So, cause, what is cause? Well, let's go, you know, let's not make know. it up. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, you understand the term of cause and effect, yeah? I mean, in, in, in terms of, like, everyday life, but so I mean, in terms of the causing the universe, like, what do you actually mean? No, but what I'm saying is this. If the universe has a cause, whatever that cause is, whatever you want to define that cause to be, yeah, yeah that's a different story. Okay. That's perspective, okay? Sure. But the principle is, is there a cause of the universe? And once we have a cause of the universe, to solve the problem of infinite regression, that cause needs to be uncaused. Okay. So when someone says, oh, who created God? For example, yeah. um, then, well, if something's uncaused, nothing created it. Sure. It's just there. Yeah? yeah? Because whatever the original cause is, whatever that uncaused cause is, has to be uncaused. By its nature? Has to be. Okay. It can't be anything else. So there's no don't know about it. Yeah. Now you can say you don't know what the cause is. Yeah. But you can't say you you don't know if the cause is uncaused or not, because if it's it couldn't we couldn't have a world today in the universe today if the cause wasn't uncaused. Okay. Because we'd have a, now you could maybe have five causes and then you get the uncaused cause, but then we'd use Occam's razor and just remove the other four and we get back to our original creator. Sure. Do you understand? Yeah. Why would jump to four creators is irrelevant? You understand the point? Yeah. So this is why the uncaused cause. It has to be uncaused, obviously, and then it then it rolls on. If it's uncaused, then it's conscious, because it chose when to create the universe and not. To. What was the? I think when you were speaking to the other guy, I think the premise that you uh, for the uncaused cause um, and the cause of the universe was that um, would you say that the universe had a beginning? I believe the universe had a beginning. Yeah. He believed the universe had a beginning. Sure. Do you believe the universe had a beginning? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Can you? Can we speculate on that? Because okay. I didn't ask you. I didn't ask you. Do you know? Yeah. So do you believe? Do I believe it? Um, I don't hold a belief about it at all. Well, you either believe it at the beginning or not. I just don't have any belief about it. But yeah, I mean, I would say I, I, I actually don't know. So yeah, I don't have a belief on it. I don't think we can. I don't think I'm in a position to have a belief. Do you believe the universe has always been here then? Eventually. Okay. Well, you have a belief, but you don't. I don't know though. How can I say? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think we're in a position to say whether the universe is. Uh, well, well, if you look, at, if you look at scientists like Stephen Hawkins and all of these guys, they say universe had a beginning. Okay, but they're saying that it came from the Big Bang, and that was the beginning. But but they don't know what caused the Big Bang. Exactly. So, but you know. I'm so whatever. Sure, so whatever. Sure there's other models where it's like Big Bang uh, and then uh, collapse and then go back to. Um, that, that's an M theory. No, yeah. no, 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 no. It's like I said earlier to the guy. Whatever you believe, you can believe. It's not a problem. Yeah? Don't feel I'm going to... Well, I am with it. But, but you need to tell me why you believe it. Sure. Now, you, that was fair enough. 
But you need to question. You need to question this. Yeah. Because you might not think it matters, but it does matter. Because if the universe did have a cause, if it did have a beginning, then you you've got the problem then potentially. Because you can't say it doesn't exist. Yeah. Do you understand? So you would have to then look at probabilities of what's more probable. This multiverse business, and then you have to look at fine tuning, and you have to look at all this stuff. And could this have all happened by random accident and all that? Do you understand? Yeah. Then you have to look at entropy and all of these things. And then you, you'll come to the conclusion the universe at one point didn't exist, then it began to exist. Otherwise, where are you going to go? You're going to go with M theory, which is to hardly science, or you're going to go to quantum mechanics, and you're going to talk about string theory. But again, this is all pseudo. This is there's nothing here factual here. Sure. This is this is just trying to escape into something that you don't have to explain, but you can hold on to, which is fine. I mean, but look, because here's the thing: you got to understand. Okay. In reality, I don't really care what you want to believe. Yeah. All right. I just care that you can't say my belief is wrong. Right now. Now, atheists in this park have a habit of mo mi mi sorry, mocking people who believe in God yeah. or a creator. They think they have this right, this rational, intellectual, reasonable higher ground that they can stand up and laugh at people who believe in a sky daddy, yeah. for example. I'm here to show you, you haven't got, you haven't got a flipping leg to stand on me. Because you don't know how the universe came into existence. Exactly. So you could be wrong thinking it happened by accident or thinking it happened just by some natural phenomena. Could be wrong, mate. Yeah. Yeah? Now, when I ask an atheist, how did the Big Bang happen? They say, I don't know. And I, I, I said it earlier. The reason you don't know is because there's no natural explanation. So you don't know them because of naturalism. Because if, if you have an assumption that everything has a natural explanation, then if you don't know a natural explanation, you can't say anything, can you? You have to say, I don't know. Yeah. But if you don't know something, you can't say I'm wrong about what I say about it. So how did the universe begin? I don't know. Oh, well, I believe it happened. They know you're wrong. You don't know. So, so that's my stance. Sure. With the, with the creation of the universe, what kind of time... I, remember, I know that guy threw out, threw out a figure about 13 billion years or something. Kind of, For me, it's relevant. I know you're Muslim, so what kind it doesn't of time do you think it is? It doesn't matter. They're relevant. I'm not a Christian, I. No, no, I know. Uh, OK, but I mean... It doesn't matter. Why does it matter? Why does it matter? OK, but why can't you answer the question? OK, I don't know. No, but I mean, do, do you have a belief about it? OK, if science says it's 13.8 billion years, I've got no issue to go against that. Okay. See, here's the amazing thing you see. People have this idea that science and religion uh, are kind of clashing, all right? And this was true when Christianity represented uh, religion. But Christianity doesn't represent religion now. Islam represents it, okay? Quarter of the planet are Muslim, all right? We embrace science, as I explained about the Renaissance and all of this stuff, yeah? So, I challenge anyone, bring something that's proven scientifically that goes against what Islam teaches. You can't bring me anything. So Islam is completely compatible with science. Unless you want to talk about miracles and such, but then you've got a problem because you can't, you're blind to the supernatural. So if the supernatural was happening in front of you, you don't have a, a model to, to measure it by. You've got no tool to measure it by. So let's just say, for example, God does exist and he's a supernatural force. You'll never know if science is your model. So I mean, say something materialised in front of us now. Say, I'm, 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 as I say, agnostic. Uh, but say something materialised in front of us now. Um, you'd be looking, you'd look for dynamo. You would say, well, what happened there? Yeah, what would you say? I would say, well, I don't know, that's, that's crazy. And Have you seen dynamo and the bucket of fish? Yeah, I've and seen and them do you them. All right, okay. But look. as a Muslim, what would you say? Something materialised, you know, out of thin air, say. Okay. I'm a Muslim. I believe in the supernatural. So I believe the supernatural can happen. So I can believe things that defy physics can occur. Yeah. Yeah? So when people mock Muslims about flying horses and all this nonsense, the way they say it, I have no issue with a flying horse. Because if God, the creator, can create the universe from nothing, I'm sure, pretty sure he can create a horse that flies. And that is obviously, you can hold that belief because they can't get at the, the principle. No, no. If they want to get at my principle, all they have to do is disprove the Quran. They have to prove to me that this Quran is written by men, yeah, and that it's just a book like any other book written of old. Because that's my core reason for believing Islam is the, the religion that connects to this creator I believe in. See, here's the thing you see. I became a believer in a creator before religion. 
So I was an atheist, then agnostic, then I said, you know what, I'll concede a creator, but I don't believe in man-made religion. So my belief in a creator had nothing to do with religion. It was only the religion that could connect me to the creator, though, because I had no means to connect. Okay. I had a means to, oh, you know, talk to the sky, don't get me wrong, Yeah. but I had no means to receive guidance. Sure. Yeah, and then I, I looked throughout history and how it works, and I can see how God would work. Because we have to relate to the guidance, yeah? There's no point an angel showing us what to do in that sense. Yeah. We need a human being who we can measure ourselves against, who's like me. Yeah. yeah. So I can follow that example, because if you're going to give someone a role model, they need to be like us. Yeah, it can't be abstract, it can't yeah, yeah. be a flipping God. Yeah. It's stupid, isn't it? All right. So this is why I'm, I say to Christians sometimes, how can Jesus be your example? You believe he was God. Yeah. He was never a father, he's never a husband, he's never a businessman, he's never a leader. Yeah. Why, 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 what is it? Yeah. There's nothing to follow there. I don't get it. But with Muhammad, Sallam, we get a man who was a leader, who was a husband, who was a father, who was a diplomat, who was a businessman, dipl all, oh, sorry, all of these things, right? A religious leader. And basically, um, there's a book written by a guy called Michael H. Hart called The World's 100. Read it. It's a very, very good book. And basically, he's a Christian. And he wrote a book of the most hundred influential, successful people who've ever existed and he put Muhammad in the room and he's a Christian so when he was asked why did you put Muhammad in the room no he says yeah yeah because he says um, no he's number one so Isaac Newton is number two Jesus is number three and Saint Paul is number five all right and he says I couldn't put Jesus higher than number three because it wasn't him who spread Christianity it was Paul okay and Paul couldn't have spread Christianity without Jesus. So they needed each other. Sure. All right? Because it's Paul who created Christianity in the sense it is. Yeah. Okay. But Muhammad Sallallahu alone was supremely successful on the secular and religious level in every aspect. So we have this man in history who was successful at everything he did. Yeah? And what does Allah say in the Quran about this man Muhammad? We shall make you, O oh Muhammad, an example for mankind. So 1400 years ago, the Quran promises that I'll make you an example for mankind to follow. And in the 21st century, we have a man writing a book and putting the man who's the most successful influential who ever existed, Muhammad. And the man writing it is not a Muslim. So it makes you scratch your head a little bit, yeah? So this was the point where I, I needed a connection to this creator. Christianity didn't cut it for me. Yeah. The, the, the model of God in the Christianity just seems so barbaric. Yeah. If you read the Old Testament and the genocide that took place, it was, it was unreal. Listen to this, right? Moses goes up to the mountain, and what was the second commandment? Thou shall not kill. Was it? Thou shall not kill. Yeah. Right. Then he comes from the mountain, and he sees that the Israelites have started worshiping a golden calf. So then he orders the Levites to put swords by their side and to go through the camp and kill 3,000. <laughs> kill, kill your brother and your neighbor. And 3,000 were killed. Now he's just come down from the mountain. Yeah. With thou shalt not kill, right? Yeah. <laughs> and 3,000 people are slaughtered as a repentance for them worshiping the golden calf, all right? Then we find Moses being told to commit genocide on whole nations. So Moses goes to fight the Midianites, right? And so he destroys the Midianites. And what happens in war? The, when you defeat the army, you take the women and children as captives. That's the standard. So anyway, so the Moses' army, they slaughtered all the men, and they brought all the women and all the children of the Midianites to Moses. I said, we. And Moses got angry. And he says, why have you left all the women alive? Kill all the women and kill all the small boys. And leave the girls who have not known a man. Right? What? <laughs> Moses is being is commanding from God to completely annihilate the whole male heritage of the Midianites. All right. So what's left now? Thirty-two thousand girls. Thirty-two thousand girls whose mothers, aunts, uncles, grandmothers, all slaughtered, shared out amongst the men. Right. This is from Moses after he's given the command, thou shalt not kill. 
Now here's the thing about Christian teaching, God doesn't change. What? <laughs> so, we, so we read about God in the Old Testament. I read a meme from an atheist one time, very, very funny. It says, why are Christians so afraid of the devil when it's God killing everyone in the Bible? <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Because if you read the, the Old Testament, first we got the Canaanites slaughtered, then we get the Amalek slaughtered, then we get the Midianites and the Moabites slaughtered, then we get cities burned to the ground. Yeah? Um, and God doesn't change. So we come to Jesus and we see one year of his life kind of mirrored in the Gospels, kind of hearsay. And what do we find? He's racist, he's calling Gentiles dogs, yeah? he's abusing the Pharisees, calling them sons of sex, he physically abuses them at the temple. Where's the peace, man? And Christians say, oh, he's the Prince of Peace, promising Isaiah. Wait a minute. Didn't Jesus say, think not, I've come with peace? So Jesus says, in the, it says, think not, I've come with peace. Yeah. So how can Jesus say, think not, I've come with peace, and the Christians say, he came with peace? Sure. It's balmy. All right. So anyway, then Jesus tells his disciples to go out and make disciples of all nations. And don't worry if they don't listen to you. Just wipe your dust from your sandals and walk away. Christians like to do this, to show humility, in it. They say, oh, you know, you're not going to listen to me. Okay, I tried, I tried, and walk away. Well, then what does Jesus say after that? Because the fate of that place, what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah will nothing will nothing compare to that. So Jesus now is saying what? Those who don't listen to you, just leave them. And when I come back, I'm going to kill them all. And then I'm going to throw them all in hell. Oh, I can buy this. <laughs> I can buy this. And the Christians make, always make this claim. They say, oh, the God of the Quran is not the God of the Bible. You know what? Damn right. Do you know why I say that? Because nowhere in the Quran does it say kill innocent people. But, but no, no Christian says the God of the Quran is the God of the Bible. No, there's no Christian. No, no, no. Christians say yeah. the God of the Bible is not the God of the Quran. Yes. It's, yeah. It's, that's and correct. I agree. That's correct. And I agree. That's correct. And the reason I agree, because in the Quran, God does not slaughter children and babies. But in the Bible, by the bucketful. Uh, yeah. Now for me, God, what does he say in the Bible? God does not change. So, if, And this is a God that de demands blood. It's blood sacrifice. There's no remission of sin without blood. M my creator, Allah, doesn't ask for blood. He just asks what? Repentance. So if you do something wrong, the uh, blasphemes God or goes against God, all you have to do is ask God to forgive you. Now let's just say you mugged this geezer and you ask God to forgive you for that. No. You have to go to him and ask him to forgive you. And if he won't forgive you, then God can forgive you. Sure. All right? Look at the difference. If you read the Quran, you'll see Allah is, is uh, like he says, he says to Muhammad, you're not a dictator over them, merely a warner. So you're just here to warn the people. You're not here to force them to do anything. Yeah. yeah? Allah tells you to only fight those who fight you. Yeah? And um, there's, you don't, you know, the people who want peace with you, there's no, no harm in that and whatever. You get me? But when you read the God of the Bible, wrathful, jealous, murdering, genocide, raping, torture, it's like, what's going on here? Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a Bible, isn't it, man? It's, it's a Bible. But then doesn't the Quran say that... Um why are you upset? Don't be upset. It's, it's your Bible, man. Muslims. It's your Bible, man. But doesn't the Quran say that um, the Quran is following on from the from uh, no. like to no no no. He, he, now he, he, now here's another false assumption. Okay. The Quran talks about the Torah, but the Torah is what was given to Moses. The Quran talks about the Injil, which was given to Jesus. Now we don't believe the Jesus the, the Injil is the New Testament, and we don't believe that the Torah is the Old Testament. Okay. We don't believe this. Sure. Yeah. We believe they've been corrupted. Both of them, yeah. We don't believe but Jesus was given a Bible. He was given a message. Okay. And if you read the Bible, it says in the Bible Jesus was preaching the Injil. So he was preaching the Injil, which he was given. So we have no issues with that. Message, yeah. No Injil, good the news, the good news. Okay. But it's we, what we what we don't say is that it was a book, like a Bible, because what we do know, Jesus wasn't preaching the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Sure. And he wasn't preaching the letters of Paul and the epistles and Acts. And if he wasn't preaching them, then the Injil is not the New Testament. All you can find in the New Testament is echoes and remnants of what Jesus might have done. Because even what the New Testament, the Gospels say, 
Muslim. It's not. I, it's not eyewitness testimony. It's not eyewitness. The, the Matthew wasn't an eyewitness to some of the events. Mark definitely wasn't eyewitness. Luke definitely saw nothing. They're saying something was a hundred years after. It. No, not even that. The people who they claim, they weren't there. Yeah. There's no eyewitness testimony. So it's just hearsay. Now, the beautiful thing is the Quran is preserved. So we know the message of the prophets, previous prophets. And all the prophets preach the same thing. There's only one God and worship him. That's it. Do you get me? There's only one God and worship him. That's all you're asked. And then by worshiping God, what do you do? You obey God. And if you obey God, what do you do? Follow his guidance. And if you follow his guidance, what do you do? Benefit yourself. So by obedience to God, you benefit yourself. Yeah, beautiful. And then what does God do in his wisdom? He gives you the greatest reason to obey him. And the greatest reason not to disobey him. Right. Why does he do that? Because God knows in his wisdom that man is only motivated by punishment or reward. Benefits and detriments. What am I going to get for doing it? What are you going to do to me if I don't do it? That's how we work. We don't park on double yellow lines because we're going to get a ticket. If we didn't get tickets to park on the WL lines, we'll park on them all day long. Yeah. yeah. If we got paid 50 quid not to park there, we wouldn't park there. Simple. That's how we work. So God knows man's nature. So he will give us the greatest reward, paradise, to come to, and the greatest punishment to avoid. What's, what's God doing here? He wants you to come to obey him, isn't it? And why is he wanting to obey him? Is he going to benefit from your obedience? No. Who's going to benefit? Yourself. Of course. And that guidance is what? Guidance from the one who created you in the first place. And like I said, it just so happens that guidance is the one thing that can save societies today, that can stop all this, stop the rot. Because all these poisons that are in there, they're all prohibited, man. 1400 years ago, the author of the Quran knew what would cause problems for society in the 21st century and prohibited it. They're probably causing problems back then. Yeah, I reckon. Well, no, 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 drugs. I don't want to say drugs, sexual immorality, what? What did they care? Come on, man. Yeah, put Maghrib, inshallah. What's your name, my man? Connor. Connor, very nice to see you. Have we spoke before? No, never. Sure. Connor, take care.